Hey guys, this is Dorian Day and welcome to Serum in Depth number 24. Today we're going to be going over the impact of sampling rate on wavetable resampling. So all of this came about because before I figured out how to get the wavetables out of Massive, I was trying to record them so that I could import them into Serum. Let's give some of these a listen. This is modern talking. <laughs> Now that's at 44.1. That's at 96. Um, what you can hear is that they're pretty low pitch and long evolving sounds. Uh, I'm not going to go into the creation of these in this video. I'm going to do that in the next one and all the details on how to do this and what's going on. But suffice it to say that these are perfect wavetables because they are exactly 250 cycles long and each cycle is exactly 2048 samples uh, in length. So, um, you know, just as I've talked in this perfect single cycle waveform video and about in the manual, Serum expects uh, wave cycles of 2048 samples and the n most number of frames it can handle is 256. So that's, that's maximizing the the memory space in serum and perfectly matching each waveform and cycle to the box that it belongs in so what's the impact of sample rate on these uh so you can see right here that i have i did three different uh oscillators out of massive i did square saw one poly saw and modern talking um i sampled each one of these at 44.1 k 96k and 192k um, and then the phase two is where I had to do slight editing and audacity as has been exemplified in some previous videos and what's the final impact well let's see these are all almost all at two f the first ones are almost all at 244 so let's try this out and you need to apply an LFO to the wavetable to see this And usually the first one is junk for whatever reason. I don't know why the first frame doesn't get caught or um, sampled accurately. Duplicate. Insert. Okay. So you can see that these are perfect samples and the reason that I call them perfect samples is because there's no movement uh, horizontally in the waveform like if I go to 2043 and I drag that waveform back in it starts to wobble and if you find our massive wavetables that we use out of straight out of massive you'll see that the, when they animate They don't shift left and right. The other thing to notice is that for whatever reason, our sampled wave table doesn't look like the one that comes out of Massive. It moves differently. I'm not 100% sure why. Do I have to shift it? Reverse? Is that it? Or does that look exactly the same? Hmm, odd. So anyways, let's finish up with our investigation. So this is square saw one at 44 one. As you can see, sounds great, looks great. This is square saw one at 96. Uh, pretty much exactly the same, perfect. And this is at 192. Now I'm gonna bring these over because even I find this hard to believe.
So right here, if I click on 44.1, you can see right here, 44.1. If I drag it in, perfect. 96, base 2. Perfect. 192. Perfect. I'll draw draw or drag one in that's not from phase two where I didn't pre-edit it. And you can see that's what happens because it doesn't they don't the cycles don't perfectly fit into their boxes, so it animates kind of like when you're maybe watching a cartoon. And if the, you know, they do the flip book and if it moves too fast, it seems like it's jumping. And if it moves too slow, it doesn't seem like it's moving right. This is sort of a similar situation. Uh, try poly saw at one, four, four, one. Okay, it was two, zero, four, four. This one has a slight amount of uh, phase shifting from left to, left to right. You can see right here, it moves a little bit. All right, now how about 96? Back to 44.1. 192. I want to say I can hear a difference between the three of them, but I really can't. Um, anytime I think I can hear like, oh, this is different in this way, I pop back to the other one and it sounds pretty darn similar. And if I go into the original massive poly saw, You can hear the resemblance. Um, there's ways to improve upon this, but not from for this video. So you can hear the general tone, but it gets distorted. I want to say that the higher the sample rate, there's more body, but I, even then, I... Yeah. All right, on to modern talking. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the 44.1 got fixed unless it just goes in perfectly. Yeah, that one didn't get fixed. So there you have it. This is the difference in sample rates uh, between the different sampling. Um, between it's the difference in sample rate when you're resampling, which is pretty much nothing. Essentially, all three sampling rates can give you roughly the same result. Uh, this is pretty relieving in some sense because it allows you more freedom, I think, in actually creating these tables, especially in a like a sound design sense because the thing that's the most different between each one of these uh, sampling rates is the tempo of the project they were recorded in. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over all the calculations on how to do this. But a 44.1k file has to be recorded at um, 
its pitch needs to be, well, I have all the calculations down here. Its pitch needs to be F sharp zero plus 23 cents. No, wait. Okay, no. For 44.1, it's uh, negative F1 minus 23 cents. For 96K, it's F sharp zero plus 23 cents. And for 192, it's F sharp one plus 23 cents. So, and if we hear these recordings, this one's really low. That's at 20, what, 20, 21.5 hertz. That's at 46.875 hertz. And that's at 95 hertz. So these, I'm thinking this is going to matter down the line, but at this point, at least you can see that no matter which sampling rate you choose, as long as you do all of the math and everything correctly, which we're going to show in the next video, you get roughly the same results, at least for these three, um, three samples out of massive. Uh, I tried other ones that I didn't include here and it got pretty much the same results. So here it is.